On this episode, we're gonna talk about South by Southwest social media marketing world and where everything is headed. Hey, what's going on everyone? Carlos here, welcome to another episode of Real Talk, my all new series in which I interview interesting guests in the world of business and answer your questions. I am back here at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center in San Francisco next to my tag team partner, Jenna. How's it going, Jenna? It's going well. It's really good to see you in person. I think <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of you on the internet. My ads are show Carlos Gill, so thank you. It's good to have you back. How does it feel to be back in San Francisco? Well, it has been a whirlwind of a couple of weeks. So I've taken a little hiatus from recording the studio while I was out at Social Media Marketing World last week and the week before that, South by Southwest. A lot of folks have been seeing the Hustle Diaries on YouTube as well as on Facebook. So thanks to all of you out there. But it has been, it's been, it's been a grind. Sure. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. <laughs> like being out on the road and you know going in and out at different events, meeting different people. You know, I love doing that sort of stuff. But along the way, I've met some really, really cool creators and peeps. And for me, this so this South by Southwest specifically was different because it was my second. Last year was the first, and it's like anything else. You go to your first event and you're really jazzed up. You want to take in all the sessions. And this year is different. So I spoke at two events. I also hosted an event as well at South By. And I'd say probably what I enjoyed the most was, was actually meeting creators. There's a lot of creators. So you see what I'm doing. I'm creating a lot of content. We're here in the studio here in San Francisco creating content. And the last three to four months for me have been more about transitioning from being viewed as a guy who's just a Snapchatter to really being much more multidimensional and being able to create content on the different platforms and take people behind the scenes. And as I'm meeting creators and I'm meeting some of the top Snapchatters and YouTubers out there. We're having these very real conversations about where this is all headed. Are we investing our times on the right platforms? And should we realistically be you know, expanding our reach on others? I just want to go back for a second because you said that you were just at South by Southwest, not for the first time, but for the second mm -hmm. time. So elaborate on that difference. What was your strategy going into it this time? It's a very good question. So I often say this, especially to a lot of younger folks is as you're getting started in your career, it's all about access. Once you have the access, meaning once you've been there, that's all about the opportunity. I went to some different events out there like, you know, YEC, uh, you know, rubbed elbows out there with Ja Rule and Gary Vaynerchuk and, you know, met some, you know, folks that are, are starting up some very impressive companies right here in San Francisco that I want to actually get on the show. Um, so it was more about the opportunity of getting in front of people. Like I said before, early on in your career, or anytime you're the first, the first event, you really want to just have the access. And then after that, it's about like, all right, I'm here, I'm planting my, my, my flag in the ground. And now it's more like, how can I help you? How can we work together? And that's just, that's just an evolution of, of our careers, right? Once you get to that point where you're speaking on the stages, people start to really look at you in a different light. And, um, you know, I'd say for me, this South by was just more or less around like everywhere I went, there was a purpose. Everywhere I went, there was an objective. And it was really about how can I, you know, help people as much in their objectives business wise. And I've noticed specifically with the content you've been putting out recently, you've done some shorter form clips, right? You've also been promoting brands or having more partnerships, right? Mm -hmm. So would you say that in this process of going to these events and getting more brand awareness around Carlos skill, that these opportunities are coming in and you're capitalizing on them as they come? So the opportunities is a really good question. The opportunities, I'm actually going out and finding them. And I think that's having a background in marketing, especially social media, you know how to get directly to potential sponsors out there. So we were working with, with Mazda, for example, Borrow Lens, is we had some sponsors at the event that we hosted at South by and a lot of these sponsorships and this is a tip for for those out of you out there whether you're a content creator or you're looking to get sponsored I know you're wearing some very nice Pumas yeah. the Riri Pumas there yeah, so if you're looking to get sponsorships you're looking to get brands to work with you you have to approach them through social media because realistically that's the easiest way to get a hold of a brand because you know that there's someone on the other line so Typically, I will just reach out directly through a DM on Instagram. I'll reach out through a tweet on Twitter, and I'll say in the tweet, what's the best way to get in touch? R-E colon influencer partnership. And the cool thing about doing that is they can see you right there and then. So like, there's no secret methodology for any content creator or personality out there if you wanna get sponsored or you wanna work with brands, other than 
reach out to them through the mediums that they're using. And then the cool thing about it is that if it's Instagram, they can look at your Instagram profile right there and then. They can see like Jenna's into fashion and she really appeals to our brand because we're looking at her. Same thing on Twitter, same thing on YouTube. What I hear you saying is that social media is a really strong platform to reach out for these brand partnerships because they can see in the most authentic way, right, what you bring to the table. Is that what you kind of are getting at what, here? What's, it's, it's, I want to say transparency, but I really don't think that transparency is even the word sure. simply because people put on social media what they want to put out. So if you are presenting yourself as you're into high-end fashion and you're engaging with these high-end fashion brands, then it's a slam dunk. If you go from promoting high-end fashion, but then saying to a brand that's like a completely different vertical. Maybe it's like, you know, automobiles and they might not necessarily see that it aligns with their brand. So my advice to content creators out there, especially if you, you know, you're trying to get sponsorships is make sure that when you reach out to them, you are putting in front of them, you're pitching to them what it is exactly that you intend on doing for them. So case in point, with some of my different hustle diaries that I'm doing now, some of those are getting sponsored and I'm able to actually show a product to a brand. So when I approach them, I'm able to say, hey, this is what I do. And if you want your product placement, like if it's an airline or if it's a car or if it's an apparel and you want your product to be placed in it, this is gonna be the end product. And you have to make it really easy. Like that's the key. You have to make it really, really easy for these brands. If they have to overthink it, they're gonna just move on to the next person. So now we've covered South by Southwest. Let's go into social media marketing world because mm -hmm. you are a social media marketer. So what was that experience like for you? What learnings did you walk away from that experience with? I, I first wanna say going back to South by Southwest, that I was able to see some really cool VR and like 360 okay. degree content out there. So it was interesting because last year at South by, it seemed to be like all about Snapchat. And this year, like there was you know very little in, in the ways of like content. Like I spoke with three other Snapchat Snapchatters on like the official Snapchat panel at South by, but there wasn't a lot of content around like even live video. It was more or less specifically like on AR, VR, and 360 video, which takes us into social media marketing world. Okay. Social media marketing world is the largest social media conference in the world, no pun intended. Over 3,000 attendees in San Diego. You have like all the top thought leaders in the industry in one place at one time. Brands, small businesses, case in point, if you work in social media, then you have to be there. Next year, hopefully, we can get you out there, Miss Jenna. <laughs> but it was a really cool experience from a standpoint of you get everyone gathered in one convention center talking about the industry and where it's headed. Once again, it looked like this year Snapchat was almost like, like the redheaded stepchild. There wasn't like this buzz and energy in the air like there was last year. Instead, this year it was Instagram, like all the Instagram sessions completely full standing room only mm. anything live video completely full mm. standing room only there was creator tracks this year which is really cool so there's a lot of folks out there that they totally get you have to create content but they don't know how to get started what sort of equipment to use how often they should post and the cool thing is once you actually immerse yourself in the art of content creation those principles apply on almost every single social network so just coming back, I've been following your journey for a while. Okay. So you were on Snapchat heavy. Yes. I, our first interviews, you were pushing Snapchat. You were a champion. And I even told you, I think Instagram is a bit stronger. People are spending more time there. And so now you've also switched from just being on you know, Snapchat, mm -hmm. but creating content for all of your platforms. So what is your strategy now? as you see the changes of these different social platforms and what they can do for you? You have to be omni-channel present. That's, that's really the answer, is you cannot afford, and this is my advice, this has been my advice. Sean Ayala, for example, he's a top Snapchat. I've had a lot of conversations with him over the last couple of weeks at South by Social Media Marketing World. Sean, you know, I'm sure you wouldn't mind me sharing some of this kind of more behind the scenes real talk, but I've been talking a lot with Sean specifically because he's a really talented guy and puts a lot of detail and attention on Snapchat. And like I've been letting him know, Sean, for every time there's a Facebook stories that comes out, for every time there's an Instagram stories that comes out, for every time that there are tools and features that take people away from Snapchat, that's declining reach for you, for me, for every single person out there on Snapchat. So when you've got talent to create art, that talent doesn't just live on Snapchat. That talent can live on Instagram, it can live on Facebook, it can even live on your website, on your Facebook page. There's so many ways that you can take that talent. Same thing with myself. Historically, I use Snapchat and I still use it as a way to engage with my community, to give them advice, give them actionable insights about marketing, social media, personal branding, careers, et cetera. That doesn't just need to live on Snapchat. And a lot of what we've done here in the studio over the last almost year is taking the early onset of using Snapchat to teach, 
create content here, take that content, put it on, on Facebook, put it on YouTube, chop it up, create little segments. So it comes down to A, content. Like social media nowadays, I think you can agree with this, is a very, very noisy ecosystem. Completely. Extremely noisy. And I know we're gonna talk about Facebook stories here in a minute, but there's only two ways that you can go. You can rise above the noise or you can drown below it. For every single time that you go on any social media site and someone is live streaming or they're posting content on any of these stories, you have to work harder. That's less attention that you're gonna get. And you essentially have to work harder to rise above the noise. And how do you do that? It's through the content that you yeah. create. And that's just not on one platform. That's, again, being omni-channel present. Create content on the platforms for the audience that you know that you are looking to serve. And more specifically, don't just repurpose, but like actually create native content. So are you creating native content on Facebook Stories right now? I just joined Facebook Stories yesterday. So we all kind of got this update over the last couple of days here in the States. So I went on there and I posted some content. I haven't posted anything on Snapchat since. It's, it's like, this is a pendulum. Think of it as like the pendulum swings, right? For you to justify creating content on social media, at the end of the day, people have to like really consume it. If you're creating content but no one's consuming it, then social media can be a complete waste of time. That's social media 101. So where I'm trying to kind of keep it real with people is from the standpoint of Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, you're all speaking to different audiences. Because let's face it, let's just jump right into Facebook stories. You're speaking to your friends because Facebook stories is not public and you can't, as a brand, create content on stories yet. So you're speaking to like one group. Snapchat, you're speaking to another, which is historically younger people. And the way people use Snapchat, from my perspective, is still different than how people use Facebook or even how they use Instagram. It's like very short, you go in, you use it for messaging. Instagram is the wild card. And I firmly believe, I see you're nodding your head yes, so I wanna turn it back at you and, and see what you think. I firmly believe that the social network that's gonna win here is Instagram because Instagram has found a way to combine like the best of the best. You can do live streaming, you can have an album, you can do like a, a gallery now with multiple photos, you have hashtags which helps for discoverability, so there's kind of like a Twitter factor there, and you can snap, which is stories. Instagram, I'll still stand by my vote for Instagram because I know I spend most of my time hanging out on Instagram. And I used to be on Snapchat. I was posting short videos to Snapchat. I enjoyed it because it was a smaller group of people. I probably can do a, more crazy things right. than I could on Instagram. I have some of my coworkers on Instagram, right? But I, I like being on Instagram, one, because it's visually appealing. Mm -hmm. So not only are the images, people are putting their best images out, right? But even some of the ads, those images, great images, really interactive, small things. You see small details moving in those images. Further, my story. More people are watching with my story, not just watching, but engaging. So I will go on Instagram and I'll have a message from someone or a comment from someone. And I think that makes that process so much more enjoyable than it was on Snapchat. Lastly, I love the fact that I can now save posts. Right, so instead of just having to screenshot everything that I really liked, like that's a beautiful place I wanna visit there. That's a really cute look, I'm gonna replicate that, right? I can save those posts and go back to them later and that's for my private viewing only. So Instagram, yes, they have figured out a way to combine the best of both worlds and bring them to you so that you're scrolling. You are constantly using your scrolling thumb, right? I think now with the introduction of Facebook stories, again, we'll see how it how it shapes up in coming weeks and how, how people are using it. You know, I think, Facebook with, with all of the ads, right? And with the fact that, again, those are your teachers, those are your friends, those are aunts and uncles. You'll figure out what you wanna share on that platform. So let's see in general how it kind of shapes up. But what I hear you saying is that social media, yes, repost comp, repurpose content, but really create native content for each. Mm -hmm. Capitalize on each of the tools they provide for a different reason and realize that you're communicating with a different audience on each platform mm -hmm. and figure out what they want and they need in the moment. Yeah, I agree. And I would say, you know, the, ma the like the pure magic of social media actually happens in comments. And that's something that is so overlooked. There's so much emphasis in creating stellar content that drives likes and shares and, and whatnot. But like oftentimes I love reading comments because when you really have a community that's engaged, they're going to keep telling you what they want. They're going to tell you what they think about it. And let's kind of switch gears from a business standpoint. That's what you want. Like if you are a business, whether you're a small business or you know, medium and enter enterprise business and above, like you should really be focusing, even if it's like the same 20 people that comment on Instagram or comment on your post on Facebook, like that's truly your community. So many folks get like caught up in these big vanity metrics and whatnot. Just because someone's like watching, which means that they like saw you in passing, doesn't mean that they're really paying attention. Yeah. 
So pay attention to the comments. And again, I'm, I'm completely with you. It sounds like you're kind of writing off Snapchat and you're like going all in. Are, are you? I am. You are, oh. I am. I, what, what comeback are they gonna make? I don't know. <laughs> I, I wish I had those answers. People ask me that. Honestly, at my speaking engagements I'm gonna be doing now going forward the rest of the year, it's gonna be dual. It's gonna be Snapchat and Instagram. Okay. There, there, there's, a, there's a term I'm gonna start using a lot called micro content storytelling. Okay. Because that's what this comes down to. And like that's what I was telling Sean and other creators at South By was like, you're a, you're a storyteller, you're a creator. You're not a Snapchatter, you're not a YouTuber, you're a creator. Start putting yourself in the mindset of creating content with like you being the network and then these channels being like your distribution outlet to get the message out. So distributing content, you said from South by Southwest, it'll be moving more towards AR and VR. Yes. So we'll be looking for more of that and also 360 video. We will continue to put out content or see how it goes on Facebook with Facebook stories. Instagram has the captive audience right now because of all of the capabilities that they have. Snapchat will continue to create. Snapchat content. will be there. Snapchat Snapchat's too. a public company. <laughs> they have shareholders to keep yeah. happy. It'll be interesting to see what Snapchat does. I think at this point they keep getting kicked in the teeth by Facebook. And they're gonna have to do something at this point to like, get people to say like, wow, this is like really cool. I wanna spend my time here. I, I can tell you, it, it's like the pendulum has definitely swung back over into Facebook side, big time. So do you think, this is my last question on this, do you think it'll be around the wearable technology, right? So will it be with glasses at Snapchat? That's the thing though, like I surround myself with a lot of techies and marketers. So I often like to throw this back to like the everyday consumer user? Do they really want to wear glasses? I know I was talking with Robert Scoble at South by Southwest and he like had me mind blown. I was looking at this hollow lens that literally you, like you put on this headset and it transforms your entire room. Like the room that we're in here now, it would transform this room into an arcade. Like you're in the game and your hands control everything. Like it's wow. completely mind blowing. Wow. So like it's headed that way. He was even saying that with this device, you'll be able to have like your own like sports book at home with like every single game up here. Like there in the next like couple years, I don't think so. I think it's like anything else. It's gonna take time for people to graduate from going to CVS or Walgreens to process film to then jump over to a digital camera to then jump over to an iPhone. So I think we're probably like maybe four or five years away. My advice to, would be start creating more like 360 content because 360 cameras are going down in price. And you can create a really cool experience on YouTube and on Facebook with 360 video, like for your business or if you're a content creator, start tapping into things more like um, live video even. And, and I know it's kind of counterintuitive because I've been you know, kind of critical of live video, but still like, as long as your content's on point, I'm gonna keep going back to that. If your content is on point, people will watch. Use the platforms for distribution. Use the platforms for dis distribution and continue to create awesome content because yes. you put out awesome content from Real Talk to Hustle Diaries, which I love the name of. Thank You're you. putting out awesome, relatable content. And when I watch it, when I'm, a, I'm engaged with it and I want to share it with someone else. So the ads are not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> which by the way, friends, that means Facebook ads do work. They so do. maybe I'll do a video at some point talking all about Facebook ads. So awesome. Jenna, thank you so much. Thank you. For collaborating once again in the studio here at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center, where can the viewers learn more about you? If you want to know more about what the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center does, follow us on Twitter or Instagram at The Center and sign up for our newsletter. Go to thecenter.nasdaq.org and sign up for our newsletter so you know what programs are coming your way. Boom. Awesome. Awesome. As always, if you like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button right here below. I had to emphasize that. You have to. Right here. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> Anyways, friends, until next time, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Share it out with your homies on social media. And also drop a comment below. Whatever's on your mind, I'm going to be coming back here at NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. I'm going to be recording more content with Jenna. And I really want to answer your questions. Until next time, peace.